In the early 1920s, the city of New York proposed a master plan to create a new subway system to expand transit access in New York City. One of the lines proposed in the master plan was the 2nd Avenue line. The line was supposed to run from Lower Manhattan, where it would connect with the soon-to-be-constructed at the time IND Fulton Street Line in Brooklyn and Throgs Neck Line in the Bronx. A century later though, in 2022, we have a short four-stop line in Manhattan, which is the only part of the 2nd Avenue line which sees revenue service in the present day. In this video, we explore the history of the line, discussing its setbacks and what caused the line to have such little of itself completed. As we explore the history of the line, you'll notice just how much prices have inflated over the past century, and that's where this video's sponsor, Masterworks, comes into play. Every time I make a new Subway video, I'm grateful a Subway ride is still just $2.75, because inflation is ruining just about everything else. Not only is it basically taking money out of your bank account, but most ways of passively growing your money have taken a sizable hit, like the stock market. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Masterworks. It's a unique platform that lets you invest in contemporary art by legends like Picasso and Banksy, but for a fraction of the full price. According to Citibank, contemporary art has taken a very low correlation to other investments like stocks, so when they dip, your investments may not. And if inflation has you worried, contemporary art may be an attractive option. The last time inflation was this high, its prices appreciated more than gold and real estate, at an average of 17.5% per year, per the MW All Art Index. Of course, any investment can fluctuate and me talking about this does not mean I'm giving financial advice, but what Masterworks is doing is really fascinating and it's in their best interest to get the highest return possible for you. Which is why from the 8 paintings they've sold, Masterworks has delivered at least 17.8% returns to their investors on 7 of them. In their last 3, they handed returns of 17.8%, 21.5%, and 33.1%. Masterworks has done so well, there's a waitlist to join their 550,000 plus members, but you can get priority access by clicking the link in the description. Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video, and now let's take a trip back into the 1920s. Following World War I, New York City saw a dramatic ridership increase throughout the multiple subway systems providing transit service in the city. The aforementioned master plan, including proposals for multiple new subway lines throughout the city, was crafted as a massively scaled down version of another huge subway plan. The original plan was created by the New York Public Service Commission in 1920. They tasked Daniel L. Turner, an engineer with conducting a study to analyze ridership patterns, seeing where people were coming from and going to, and coming up with ways to expand access to transit in New York City. The commission's plan called for multiple new subway lines. In fact, it called for a new line on just about every North-South Avenue in Manhattan. One of these proposed lines were to run on 2nd Avenue. The original proposal for the 2nd Avenue line saw a massive six-track trunk line. The line would serve as a replacement for the IRT 2nd and 3rd Avenue lines, which were rapidly aging at the time and had limited capacity with their short trains and small stations. The line would have connected to the then unbuilt 6th and 8th Avenue lines. Even though it was featured in the IND's plans just a few years later, the line wasn't prioritized as part of the construction of the system. The IND would rather put their focus into the new 6th and 8th Avenue lines, along with expanding into Queens, which had, and still has, limited subway access. Despite this, in 1929, the Board of Transportation approved the 2nd Avenue line. At the time, the projected cost was nearly $100 million, the equivalent of $1.5 billion. Keep in mind that this was the cost for the entire line. Compare that with today's multi-billion dollar cost for just specific phases of the line and you'll be able to see how greatly the costs have inflated in the past century. In 1929, when the project was approved by the Board of Transportation, the plan had evolved. The line would still have six tracks, but it would now connect to multiple Bronx branch lines, along with the 6th Avenue line around 60th Street. The line was expected to be completed between 1938 and 1941, 
and in anticipation of the line, real estate prices along the route soared by an average of 50%. All seemed to be heading in the right direction until the early 1930s. Due to the Great Depression, a period of great economic depression lasting throughout the 1930s, many construction projects worldwide were cancelled. New York was an exception to this, however. Since transit ridership continued to grow in New York City during this time, halting construction projects which were set to expand transit access in the city was not an option. The city did realize, however, that it was necessary to attempt to reduce the cost of its projects. In an attempt to do so, the Second Avenue line was scaled back. Instead of running down to the financial district, they cut it back to 34th Street. Throughout the 1930s, the plan saw more and more revisions, one even seeing the removal of the Bronx branch of the line. By 1939, construction on the line had been postponed indefinitely. At this time, the plan had seen even further revisions, only featuring two tracks through its core section in Manhattan, with a singular branch running into the Bronx and Brooklyn. By 1941, the project's cost now amounted to $250 million, the equivalent of $4.5 billion. In that same year, the United States had entered World War II, and the demand for construction materials shifted from public works to the active war. In June 1940, the IND's operator, the New York City Board of Transportation, took over the transportation assets of the IRT and BMT. Immediately following unification, some of the elevated lines around the city were being shut down in preparation for the construction of the IND's new subway lines. One of the major casualties was the IRT 2nd Avenue elevated, which provided commuters from Astoria and Flushing with direct service to Manhattan's Far East Side. As a result, those lines experienced major overcrowding as more and more people crammed onto trains for even longer, attempting to get to other transfer points. Throughout the 1940s, the east side of Manhattan saw a drastic increase in population. This only further accentuated the need for a 2nd Avenue line, and introduced fears of overcrowding on the IRT Lexington Avenue subway. During the mid-1940s, plans for the 2nd Avenue line saw more and more modifications, with one proposing the line branching to multiple B-Division lines, including the IND 6th Avenue line, BMT Broadway line, BMT Nassau Street line, and more. As it was becoming obvious that the proposals for the 2nd Avenue line were becoming too ambitious, parts of it were cut, such as the southern portion which would connect to Brooklyn. Many things were changed with the plans for the 2nd Avenue line, like a connection to the IRT Pelham line, converting it to IND standards. This plan is actually still discussed to this day. Some people include it in their plans for deinterlining the New York City subway system. While progress on the 2nd Avenue line slowed following World War II, New York City attempted to move forward with the plans. In 1949, they accepted delivery of 10 R11 subway cars, which were a series of prototype subway cars built to run on the 2nd Avenue line. These cars, built by the Bud Company, were the first stainless steel subway cars built for the system. The order originally consisted of 400 subway cars, however, due to the postponement of the line, only 10 cars were constructed. Each car costed a little more than $100,000, prompting rail fans to give the R11s the name of the $1 million train. While the train was a prototype, it ended up running in revenue service for almost 30 years. Unfortunately, we never got to see these trains in proper service on the 2nd Avenue line. I won't go too into detail on these cars in this video, but if you are interested in them, tell me in the comments section below and maybe I'll create a video on the R11 in the future. Following the introduction of the R11 in 1949, not much else interesting happened. Just the usual modify old plans, announce a completion date for the line, and then cancel it. In the 1960s, however, it became apparent to the Transit Authority that they needed to get something done with this new subway line, as the Lexington Avenue line started to see horrible overcrowding on both express and local trains. A small part included in the 2nd Avenue line plans was constructed and opened in 1967. This small project is known as the Christie Street Connection. It included a connection from the 6th Avenue line to both the Williamsburg and Manhattan bridges. 
with funds for the line provided by the Urban Mass Transportation Act in 1964, the Transit Authority moved ahead with construction. They approved the contract for the design of the line. Over the next few years, plans for the line were finalized with three phases being decided upon. While all of this sounded good and looked like the subway was moving ahead and finally getting to the construction phase, there were a few turnoffs. First, while all of the stations on the line would have had escalators and bright lighting, they would have had low ceilings and lacked elevators. In addition to that, station spacing would have been a huge issue. The line's proposed stations were too far spaced with the plan only including three stations north of 63rd Street. Because of this, the line was given the name of the Rich Man's Express. Heavy protesting convinced the Transit Authority to add some stations to the line, like the 72nd Street Station, but in some cases, they just proposed adding more entrances to give the impression that the line stopped there when in reality, riders would have had to walk long distances underground to get to the subway station. An odd solution to that issue. Despite all of the controversy regarding the line, the TA moved forward with it holding a groundbreaking ceremony on October 27, 1972, the 68th anniversary of the system. Construction on the line between 99th Street and 105th Street started shortly after, and during the next year, 1973, construction started on the section between 110th Street and 120th Street. Construction started on some of the sections of the line in Lower Manhattan shortly after, However, in 1975, when New York City was facing its most dire physical crisis yet, work ended on the line. Funds originally allocated to the construction of the 2nd Avenue subway were reallocated to other projects, like restoring the system to a good state of repair, new subway cars, and possible subway extensions in Queens. Transit put more of a focus on other lines like the 63rd Street Line and the Archer Avenue Line, which both connected to the IND Queens Boulevard Line, which saw a growing ridership at the time. Even with the MTA focusing on other subway projects at the time, the thought of a line running down 2nd Avenue never left their mind. With the city's economic recovery in the 1990s, the MTA revived plans for the 2nd Avenue Line, and this time, they weren't joking. With the Lexington Avenue line being the most used subway line in the entire country, they saw the construction of the line as one of their priorities. Down from 6 to 4 to 3 and now 2 tracks, the new 2nd Avenue line would run between Hanover Square in Lower Manhattan and 125th Street in Harlem. I'm not even gonna bore you with all of the dumbass plans they came up with besides this one. All I'm gonna say is that one involved the line terminating at Grand Central. From the 1990s to mid-2000s, plans started moving forward for the 2nd Avenue line. In 2007, construction, for real this time, began on phase 1 of the 2nd Avenue subway. Even though the line was finally under actual construction, multiple issues arose. The project's timeline originally called for the completion of the line in 2013. However, that was pushed back to early 2017 due to issues with deploying tunnel boring machines, cost overruns, and buildings above the line becoming too unstable. The first phase of the line running between 57th Street 7th Avenue and 96th Street 2nd Avenue was eventually completed on January 1, 2017, after nearly 100 years of delays. While only a small portion of the line has been completed so far, more of the line has been planned for future construction. In fact, the second phase of the line is set to start construction next year, which will bring the line northward from 96th Street to 125th Street and Lexington Avenue. The other two phases the MTA wants to do includes bringing the line further south into Manhattan to Houston Street and Hanover Square. When, or maybe I should say if the line is ever completed, a new service will be created, named the T, which will run the entirety of the 2nd Avenue line. So that is the history of the 2nd Avenue subway. It is a line essentially lost in time. With New York City and its famed subway going through many hard times in the past 100 years, it's understandable as to why this line isn't complete yet, and quite frankly, I'm kinda glad it wasn't. 
With how much branching the IND wants it to do with the line, I see nothing but conflict point after conflict point. But that is a topic for another video. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider supporting me via channel memberships or super thanks. once again to Masterworks for sponsoring this video, and a special thanks to the Bronx Express Gaming for supporting me at the Train Operator tier, and Stuart Guberman and Daniel Green for supporting me at the 2 Broadway tier.